أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Beloved brothers and sisters, we commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all and bless every single one of us. May he keep us steadfast. May he grant us the power to become better people as the days pass. And may he grant us the ability to fulfill the commands that he has prescribed upon us. And may he grant us the ability to abstain from the prohibitions that he has 
made clear and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the power to turn to him at all times in repentance. I mean, we have a topic that is very broad. It can be discussed from more than a thousand angles. Who is a Muslim and who is a good Muslim? The reality is this would govern the entire life that we lead from point A right to Z. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may he make us more conscious of who we are. The first question I need to ask myself is, where was I before I was born? Then I need to ask myself, where am I right now? And how long will I be here? And then I need to ask myself, where am I going to go after my heart stops beating and this body of mine is separated from the soul? Every one of us should be bothered about the answers and we should not rest until we are satisfied with the answers. We will have to go to the creator and maker because lost are those who believe that we all just came into existence coincidentally. That is definitely very foolish. May Allah protect us. It is the height or should I say the lowest level of intellect if we can even connect it to intellect. However, a growing number of people feel that we are here in this world and we were just here coincidentally. We need to enjoy as much as we can and we need to reduce this beautiful life to a little period of entertainment. And once we've enjoyed ourselves with whatever makes us feel good, then when we die, we just disappear into thin air. Sadly, this is growing to a certain extent, but I'd like to give you good news that there is a revival of religion and faith, more so that of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. My brothers and sisters, today the globe promotes entertainment as being the reason that you were brought into this world. So people every Saturday night, they are gone for the dance, they are gone to the clubs. Every other evening they are on weed, and perhaps they might be smoking all sorts of items, maybe marijuana and so on in this part of the world. And they might think, you know what? It makes me feel good, man. It makes me really feel good, man. And there's nothing wrong with it. So what? That's what they say. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed shown us the path that in this world we will enjoy and we will only enjoy the most when we discipline ourselves to the laws of the maker. So when Allah has dedicated laws of marriage, for example, they are there in order for myself and yourselves to lead a much more blessed life full of purity. When a person suffers anxiety or sometimes when they have engaged in lots of sin, they begin to suffer anxiety because they don't know and they have a bad relation with their own family members, with their spouse, with their children, perhaps with others because they have been engaging in sin and they have wasted their time in this life. When a person is on his or her deathbed, what happens? The person begins to think, where am I going? And everyone else is saying, don't worry, you'll be okay. Everything will be fine. And this person is sitting on the deathbed. And this is people, may Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill, even those who are terminally ill. Believe me, there is a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will cure you. May Allah grant you cure. But ultimately, we all have to go. It is pointless at the last moment, worrying about where am I going to go? Unless it is prior to the point of gargara. Inna Allah ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugargir. Allah accepts the repentance of a slave for as long as they have not got to the point of gargara. And gargara, for your information, is the final point as the soul is leaving the body. So Allah accepts the tawbah. What is the meaning of tawbah? Repentance. Someone says, I, am, I admit my fault. I seek your forgiveness. I repent to you. I will not do it again. Forgive me. I am at your mercy, O oh Allah. This is known as tawbah. When you repent to Allah, turn back to Allah, change your ways and habits in order to become a better person so that you can lead a beautiful life in this world full of discipline. And at the same time, when you are dying, you are 
dying in a way that you are looking forward to meeting with what, the one who made you. Today, if I were to tell you that the one who made, for example, or the one who invented, remember there is a difference between Allah when he creates and when other people invent. Allah creates from nothing. He just says, Kun. The beautiful verses of Surah Yasin, where Allah explains that when Allah wants something, when he intends anything, when he wants to create anything as well, he just says kun, which is be, and it is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is creation from nothing. But the invention of man is such that it is just the transformation of the creation of Allah from one form to another. So when a person says, I created a motor vehicle, it is not creation. It is invention in the sense that he took the different creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps applied some heat, you know, temperature and pressure and so on and converted what it looks like to some other shape and then came up with something that would be able to benefit man in a specific way. This doesn't mean they created, but it would mean they invented. So if I were to tell you that the inventor of the motor vehicle is coming to visit us here or one of the gadgets we have in our hands, say the mobile phone and so on, people would be very, very excited. Wow, I need to see this person. Moments ago, I had a walk on the other side and I see the excitement of the people. And I remind you, my brothers and sisters, I am a mere mortal, someone whose value is completely nil. Had it not been for the deen of Islam, had it not been for trying to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not even be knowing one another. Have you realized that? And there will come a time when no one will know me and nobody will know you. Just a few hundred years down the line. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So whilst we become happy to meet one another, let's clear our intentions that we are meeting each other solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it can draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not just so that I can say I met this person and you know I went to Trinidad and I met these people who did this and did that so subhanallah if I related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I am a good Muslim mashallah I realize that the Islam I have is something broader than the mere meeting with a smile of someone although that too is part of Islam so if I were to greet you with a smile and meet you with a smile and make you feel the warmth of my heart and you make me feel the warmth of your heart as well in the sense that we are Muslimin we are part of one big family in that particular case we are at the beginning the first few steps of being a good Muslim but if we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of that equation, we've lost everything. And this is why always remember your maker. I was saying we would get so excited if someone important were to come here. But imagine to meet your own maker. If someone says, come, we've got to go and meet our maker, the one who made us, Allahu Akbar. That can only happen in Jannah. That can only happen in Jannah. So how many of us are preparing to go into paradise? And one of the quickest ways of preparing to go into paradise is to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent. We turn to Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. The more we seek forgiveness, we will be, become people whose status is elevated as time passes. Once I told a young man, he told me, give me some advice. I said, constantly ask Allah's forgiveness. He said, but what if I did nothing wrong? What if I did nothing wrong? Then I had to sit and explain to say, do you know what? Istighfar and repentance is such that whether you know what you've done wrong or not, you continue seeking the forgiveness of Allah sometimes for, for anything and everything, even that you know that which you don't know. And even if you feel that you are trying your best to be as strong as possible, when you constantly ask Allah's forgiveness, your status is elevated. You become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once all your sins are wiped out, those statements will come to your rescue in your grave and in your life after death. So you continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his forgiveness. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as perfect as he was, he still used to engage in repentance 
100 times a day approximately plus minus some narrations make mention of a little bit less and some go beyond that so who are we we are not messengers we are not perfect why is it that we find ourselves calling ourselves good muslims but we haven't yet asked allah's forgiveness a week has passed a month has passed sometimes more than that has passed and we haven't even thought about it so my brothers and sisters extremely important for every one of us to constantly ask allah's forgiveness so that we can be considered good muslims we ask allah's forgiveness and we do not harm human beings we do not harm the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact so much so that the ecosystem should be at peace from our harm we should be the last people to even think about damaging the ecosystem and environment because we are muslimin my brothers and sisters the excitement that one would have to meet his own maker reminds me of the verse of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe Be conscious of Allah or fear Allah as he should be feared When we say the term taqwa I'm sure you would know that some translate it as the fear of Allah Some have a broader meaning it is a combination and it is more so the consciousness of Allah. If you are conscious of your maker and you are conscious of the fact that you are going to return to him, everything you do in your life will be a preparation towards that day. So Allah says, and do not die except in the condition of submission. Now, what does that mean? Do not die except in the condition of submission. It means lead your life in such a way that as you know, death can overtake you at any time. If it were to overtake you right now, would you be amongst those who are submitters unto your own creator? If the answer is yes, then you are very fortunate. Like I said yesterday, we have profiles on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and whatever else and WhatsApp and so on. Ask yourself. Would I like to die with that profile on? If I were to die today and people saw the profile and my messages and what I said and all the statuses that were put up and all the messages and the pictures that I shared and whatever else I had, would I really be proud of myself? That's a very powerful question because today we have social media and you find people choose the worst to put up on that. They share sometimes things that are so embarrassing. If they were to die, their close relatives would have to hide themselves or would have to find ways of how to close that account in a way that nobody on the globe can see it. Because people would say the last picture that this brother put on his, for example, account or the status he had and so on was something that was really not befitting a Muslim. May Allah protect us. So my brothers and sisters, it's an open call. You're a good Muslim. Make sure you portray yourself as a good Muslim. Live that. Someone might say, why must I do it if I'm just showing people? You are not showing people. It's for the sake of Allah. And Allah says, when you set a good example, you will receive the reward of all those who follow that example and every single one who has learned from that example. So my brothers and sisters, when you control yourself when you discipline yourself to the degree that people learn from you and the discipline you have you are automatically receiving a great reward you are contributing towards the goodness of the ummah and you are a person who definitely can be considered a one who is trying to be a good muslim because if we were to set a bad example and if we were to be people who others have followed and that has led them to destruction then we will definitely be at a great loss we cannot call ourselves good people this is why when a sin is committed in private there is a greater chance of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than when a sin is committed openly so much so that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has told us that people will continue to have that flicker of goodness for as long as they do not openly transgress 
where today sometimes you find people doing something very bad. And when you were to tell them, my son, it's not a good idea to do it so publicly and so boldly. They'll tell you, who are you? Even my father doesn't tell me that. Well, then I need to talk to your father. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, if this is going to be our attitude, can we call ourselves good Muslims? Really? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the meeting with Allah, we should not be dying except in the condition of submission, which means lead your life in a way that it, no matter when death overtakes you, you will not be caught offside, so to speak. You will not be caught on the wrong side. And it's not difficult, my brothers and sisters. It just requires dedication. And we need to understand the answers of the three questions that I asked at the beginning of the session. Where was I prior to my birth? The only way I will know the answer to that is by referring to revelation. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else has the answer. Science cannot help you. Medicine cannot help you. Those with PhDs cannot help you. The most educated of the lot on the globe cannot help you. The machinery and technology we have will not help you. Nothing will help you. Revelation will help you answer that question. Where were you? Where were you before you were born? Where we are now, perhaps we might be able to get a little bit of assistance because we know we can feel our fingers. We can feel if I were to pinch my cheeks, I would actually be able to feel it. I would release it with a little pink mark. May Allah protect us. So where am I right now? What I need to know about where, I'm, where I am right now, one might say you're in Trinidad, come on, wake up. The reality is, yes, I am. But what I mean is the life that I have now is ticking away. That's what I need to know. My days are numbered and so are yours. And so are the days of every single person on earth. Because no matter what type of beautiful health I have, what type of good looks one may have, what type of wealth one may have, we are all heading in one direction. The more conscious of that ticking a person is, the better a Muslim that person can be. Remember that. The more conscious I am of the fact that my time is running out, the better a Muslim I can be. And this is why yesterday when I met some of the brothers and sisters in the hall adjacent to this one, I noticed one had a little sand timer and it was turned around and I saw the sand going through. Something crossed my mind, but I did not say anything. I walked away. I thought to myself, my life is just like that. It is a sand timer and I don't know how much sand is left. I don't know how much sand is left at the top. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. If we can all think in this way, by the will of Allah, we will be able to prepare by making the most of the time we have. Do you know what beats me? People are into sport. I know here more cricket than football, but seeing that right now we are at the Sepp Blatter Convention Center, let's talk about football. Football, you have 90 minutes. What do you have to do in 90 minutes? Have you thought of it? You have to be the best footballer possible by trying to score as many goals as you can right or wrong life is the same or similar where you have 90 years maximum for example maybe less the average amar between 60 and 70 the average age is between 60 and 70 according to the narration of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if for example we have x amount of time how many goals can I pack away? That's what I need to think about. Every salah is a goal. Every zakah is a goal. Every good deed is a goal. Every bad deed is an own goal. Remember that. You foolish to go back to your own net and you kick the ball in and the enemy says, yeah, and it was you. Allah protect us. So this is why my brothers and sisters, Allah gives us sometimes an extra time to score more goals. What happens in football? You have a penalty shootout. You know that? Extra time becomes more exciting. And this is why every one of us, if Allah has given us age and we become older, we can be more prepared for death than he who dies suddenly at an early age. This is a gift of Allah. So 
it's sad that we understand how football works but we don't understand how life itself works there is a final whistle that shall be blown it is called a trumpet allahu akbar it is called a trumpet so much so that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said the angel who has been tasked with blowing the trumpet has already got that trumpet and already almost prepared to blow into it almost prepared to blow into it it's holding he's holding it and he's already taken that breath required to blow into it and now we are just in this existence amazing amazing description but at the same time my brothers and sisters how many good deeds can i pack away today before the end of today will i read my salah will i do so happily will i be truthful will i help others will i assist people in that which is good will i contribute towards the upliftment of society will i help prepare the generations to come so that they can lead a better life so that they can become closer to their maker am i going to be a person who's just sitting and enjoying myself with entertainment come friday evening and i say yes why because friday saturday sunday i'm partying that's the world today the world talks of partying you know that every friday every saturday sunday so much so that monday morning we are so lazy to go to work or to school it's the worst day of the week monday morning everybody complains go and search on the social network the dunya complains of monday morning why because they've been partying every whole weekend every weekend and that's their life you earn for five days in order to blow the money through the other three days five plus three is eight you don't even realize they're only seven days in the week thought of that because friday already we have switched off we're preparing for it you know you go to work early morning on a friday and we're planning the other two days so friday was a waste anyway may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us my brothers and sisters that's not what life is if you're a good muslim how can you reduce your life to entertainment alone yes you may want to enjoy yourself within the limits once in a while and you take your family you spend time with your family but you need to know the greatest enjoyment is achieved by obeying the instruction of your maker he tells you to eat that which is pure and good he tells you to earn in a beautiful way if you're a good muslim he tells you to spend time with your family members today the crisis we are facing people are prepared to spend time with their friends every night doing only what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and they know and their spouses and their family members whom they are supposed to be spending time with they are responsible for are literal orphans whose parents are alive orphans whose parents are alive because we don't even spend time with our family members and we call ourselves good muslim and then we are depressed we are sad and then sometimes we lose our families we have children who grow up all on drugs and bad habits because you never spend time with them rather enjoy yourself going on a holiday with your own family so mashallah take your family and go out and enjoy that force yourself to enjoy that little shell that allah has given you to start with what's the point of having a thousand friends when your own family is crying for your company and you cannot spend five minutes with them and you cannot speak with them with a good tongue this is why i read before you the verses of surah al-furqan towards the end where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very very clear to us who are the true worshippers of the most merciful very clear to us who are the true worshippers of the most merciful and one of them is and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when they walk they walk with humility humbleness humility humbleness we do not want to give the impression to others that we are haughty we are arrogant because we are just one of the rest subhanallah i remember once i was traveling and we had stopped to refuel in one of the we call them petrol stations and there was a group of people in another vehicle who looked at us and started laughing because we were muslimin and they started laughing at us and scoffing and so on and we could see it i told the brothers with me please just ignore them it was actually my family i said just ignore these people and i came out we bought a few you know a little bit of water and drink and whatever else whilst the motor vehicle was refueling and thereafter we came out and happily we went on to the road they had left five minutes before us somewhere down they made an accident a huge accident 
a very, very big accident. And we were one of the first people who came in. And mashallah, tabarakallah, that was an opportunity. I didn't just look at them and say, you guys laughed at me. You guys were scoffing. You guys were so arrogant. And now, goodbye. No, we didn't say that. Not at all. I stopped, ignored what happened before. Let's deal with you. Are you guys okay? Is everything fine? And I noticed there was injury. And in no time, not only with my vehicle, but a few other people, and we took them to the nearest hospital. And thereafter, we happened to help them tow their vehicle. And so many things happened. As a result, I want to share with you a statement that was uttered to me a month down the line. One of the brothers came to visit me. And he told me, I thought Islam was a very barbaric religion that never ever respected human life. And I've changed my mind forever. That's all. I've changed my mind forever. I didn't ask him, brother, enter the fold of Islam and so on. I told him, my brother, here are three booklets and here are two DVDs. I only want you to know what I believe. Here you are. That's all. That was enough, subhanallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least the bare minimum is the world can become a better place. People can start studying. They can start seeing. They can ask questions. What a great opportunity Allah gave us. This is what's supposed to be the quality of a Muslim. May Allah make us good Muslimin. And I'm sure it's happened to a lot of us. But my brothers and sisters, the worst from amongst us is he or she who behaves in a way that those who already have a not so bad impression of Islam start having a worse impression of Islam. Then we have done a disservice not only to ourselves and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well and the deen at large and every other Muslim on the globe. So we call ourselves good Muslim and then we complain about the image of Islam on the globe when we have contributed towards it. Imagine. So it's about time we revisited the rules of the game. Subhanallah. How can someone want to play football when they don't even know the rules of the game? And this brings me to a powerful point. If you want to be a good Muslim, you need to know revelation. You need to know what Allah wants from you and you need to know it. It's not good enough to say, well, you know, I was born a Muslim and uh, it's okay. I pray five times a day. Islam is not just about praying five times a day. There are so many people who pray five times a day, but their lives are upside down. They lead their lives like the worst of people. But one thing that happens, they pray five times a day. So there is a hadith of a bankrupt person. And the description of that person is he who comes on the day of judgment with so much good deeds. But because of having usurped the rights of so many others, all these good deeds shall be distributed to other people. And this person is left with no good deeds. And still there are people who are saying he's usurped my rights until their bad deeds are made to be shouldered by him. And then he is cast into hellfire. May Allah protect us. So this is why we say, let us not reduce Islam to just a faith that we should be proud about during Ramadan. Once Ramadan goes, it's over. Everything goes. Our dress code goes. All the music CDs come back into our cars and we are bouncing with the, with the vehicle. Yesterday we were driving on the road. I thought we had a bit of an earthquake and I noticed all oh, the youngsters. May Allah protect us. You know the sound you're hearing right now in this stadium? Subhanallah. I think it was sound that was perhaps more than that. The ground was vibrating. And it was just a vehicle crossing. And I looked at them and I said, Ya Allah, I hope these people, Allahu Akbar, I hope these people can replace those discs one day with that which is beneficial by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness and ease. But we are guilty. We sometimes think that you gotta, you got to be a Muslim when you enter the masjid. So when you enter the masjid, mashallah, people come in and they read their salah when they go out they are frowning they are frowning at the rest of their brothers and sisters this is a serious crisis and i have noticed it some people who claim to be more religious their attitude stinks believe me it smells so bad you got to block your nose allahu akbar 
Some people who claim to be so religious, believe me, you'll find the man dressed so appropriately. And mashallah, he looks like he is such a, a religious person. But when he, he looks at you with the eyes and he, he's gritted his teeth and you greet him, Salaam Alaikum, and he just... You come to Africa, even the lions don't do that. They'll smile at you. Amazing. Yes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really. Really. It's sad. It brings tears to the heart to see people who are supposedly good. Sometimes people have complained. Sisters have complained of other sisters. And they say, you know, some of the sisters who are supposedly outwardly so religious, they have an attitude. They don't even want to greet. They don't even want to look at the other sisters. They don't even want to make them feel at home. And this is why there are people who've entered the fold of Islam and reverted after a long time. And sometimes they look at their sisters. And I'm talking here of the sisters in particular. And then nobody turns to them. Nobody lends them an ear. Nobody gives them any importance. And they feel, wow, I was far better off at the church. It's happening. Is that what a good Muslim is? We allow racism to overtake us? Impossible. Give more time to people of another race. Believe me, you will help yourself be a better Muslim. Did you hear what I just said? Give more time to people of another race. You will help yourself be a better Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. My brothers and sisters, like I said, when we talk of being a good Muslim, there are so many things that come to mind. The verses of the Quran are full, but we haven't read that Quran. We haven't gone through the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at his life. He was the best. He was a shining example. We are talking of him for the last few days and we are speaking about him today as well. And we would like to emulate his entire lifestyle. He gave so much importance to people. He helped those who were his enemies as well. And he made sure that he greeted people. In fact, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells him to go out of his way to greet the poor. Allahu Akbar. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah says, when the believers come towards you, tell them, Salamun Alaikum. He's telling Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the reasons of revelation of that particular verse, amazing how Allahu Akbar, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is instructing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give greater importance to those who are seemingly downtrodden, yet their hearts are full of Iman. Never ever turn away from such people. Today you see a person who's a little bit poor, they might have tatty clothing and so on. And people tend to give the wealthy a little bit more importance. A good Muslim will spend a moment even giving importance to those who have tatty clothing. A good Muslim is he who gives importance to little children, knowing that the future lies in their hands. A good Muslim is he who understands the position of the sisters and has it in his mind that I will never abuse the respect of the sister of mine. Subhanallah. The world out there teaches you that a woman is just an object of sexual amusement. Believe me, they can say what they want, but that is how the women are being treated. Like I said yesterday in one of the programs I had, people say Muslim women are being forced to wear what they are wearing. The reality is the rest of the world is being forced to wear what they are wearing. Why? It's a different way of forcing. It's just a more intellectual, smart way of forcing. You see a sister or someone perhaps in a different part of the world wearing heels that are this high and they become higher. She cannot walk. Look at how high it's becoming. She cannot walk. She has calluses on her feet. She's struggling. But because the telly has brainwashed her, society has conned her. The movies have really knocked her brain out. The big brothers and reality shows have really taught her something and made her believe it's her freedom. Yet it's knocked her out because she's suffering in those shoes. But she will not leave her home without those shoes. Who was forced? Who is being forced? She, she will wear a mini skirt so mini that it becomes a maxi shirt rather than a mini skirt. 
Really? And she will do it. Why? Because of the same thing. She's out with the telly every day. The games she plays, everything on there is showing her how short the skirt should be. May Allah protect us. And then when she goes out, she looks at everyone else and says, they are forced. Sister, you were forced and compelled to do what you are doing, but in a smart way. Remember that. May Allah protect us. They are judging you based on the texture of your legs. This is what they are judging you by. They are judging you by how your hair flies in the wind. I've spoken about this in the past at length. And I've even told you about Pantene and head and shoulders and everything else. Mashallah, molten brown and what have you. May Allah protect us. We don't want to be molten red in the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So my sisters, it's just a matter of understanding. Islam teaches you to be a pure person. That's it. People are not forced. But at the same time, they accept a faith that governs them with certain rules and regulations. They are doing so happily by the will of Allah. They want happiness. They do not want to be. They do not want to be controlled by the male dominated environment around them because they are good Muslims. If you take a look at a lot of what's happening on the globe, like I said, life is reduced to entertainment, the clothing, we are affected by the advertising, the aggressive media and the social networking and the norms of society have put so much pressure on us that we will not come out of the home with hijab. Why? Because society will frown upon us. Who is being forced? Who is being forced? And how are they being forced? Who is the good Muslim here? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us vehicles of promoting goodness. My sisters, you know, one of the sisters in the United States introduced something known as World Hijab Day. And to be honest with you, the success of it has been such that people who have not worn hijab and even the non-Muslims, they have a day in February sometime when they don the hijab. Subhanallah, I'm not sure of the exact month, but I think it was February. And they put on something in solidarity with those who are in hijab. They tell you, that the comfort we feel, the goodness, the respect we get is amazing. We are not judged by the hair we have, perhaps, you know, the type of shape we have and so on. Because believe me, my mothers and sisters, you know, when a person is in love with your heart and your character and conduct and your closeness to the Almighty, their love will only increase as the days pass because that Every one of us, as we become older, we start scratching our heads and thinking about the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it makes us a little bit better in terms of people. But the shape that we have, the complexion we have, the wrinkleless face that we have, every one of those things begins to disappear as time passes. Have you noticed that? As smart as you looked when you were young, now that you are 75 years old, mashallah, you might, people might say, in her days, she must have been a looker. Have you heard that? In her days, she must have been a looker. And sometimes you get 75 year old people coming about with all these photographs telling you, look what I look like when I was 20. And the smile is so broad. My sister, you are no longer 20. You cannot tell a man, marry my photo. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The truth is, it's a reality. We are becoming old. And when we become old, we start losing one by one the glamour and the glitterous things that we've had. We start losing these things because Allah is trying to tell you, have you prepared for something bigger? We gave you your days. We really did. We gave you so much. Now we want you to come to us. A good Muslim is always conscious of this. Go back to what I said. La tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Do not find yourselves dying except in the condition of submission. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us submission. So my brothers and sisters, a beautiful way of life that we have in Islam, a beautiful way of life. If we are to adopt it, we will taste the fruits of it. Like I say, the non-Muslims are beginning to admit that, you know what? We are finding the pressure of society a little bit too much. I remember so many discussions that I've had with so many non-Muslims and a lot of them will tell you, you know, we always felt that no, you guys were being a little bit too strict and so on. But now when we are watching our generations grow, they are embarrassing us 
we really do not even know we cannot even walk with our own children sometimes because of the way they are dressed i've heard this from non-muslims why they're not dressed that's the reason not dressed not at all sometimes but worse than all that is one who called himself a muslim and we say we are ambassadors of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they ask you what's your name you say khadija and khadija is a name that was also that of Khuwailid, bint Khuwailid radiallahu anha, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But you, the way you operate in life is worse sometimes than all the others put together. And we are supposed to be the ambassadors of this deen. Is that fair? I think we can do better. My brothers and sisters, I can do better and so can you by the will of Allah. And this is why a winner is the one whom every day they are inching closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the winner. Some people might be able to leap a little bit more quicker. But others, so long as you are inching closer, you are becoming better and better. You are learning more, putting it into practice and trying to teach others. You are heading in the right direction. This is what Islam is all about. When the Prophet ﷺ speaks in the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan عنه, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he speaks about who is the best from amongst you. You want to know? The best from amongst us. I can give you one or two narrations. Let's say three narrations. One says, Khayrukum. This is the hadith of Uthman. Radiallahu an. Khayrukum. Man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu. The best from amongst all of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. And this is not confined only to one who teaches Alif and Ba and who teaches all the, you know, the Fatha and Kasra. That is a part of it. But more so, it is the teachings of revelation. Whoever has dedicated some time or a lot of time or most of their time to learning what their creator has revealed and learning it thoroughly and properly, the, the instructions, the do's and the don'ts, understanding it, putting it into practice and conveying it to others. Nobody can be better than that person. Nobody can be better than that person. Why? Because the whole purpose of this short life, short life is just a few minutes. To be honest with you, you can calculate how many minutes is 60, 70 years. The short life, the whole purpose of it is to prepare for the eternal life. That's what the Muslims believe. And for your information, the Jews and Christians believe something quite similar to that. They would tell you, you are preparing for the eternal life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good preparation. So if we lose focus even for a moment, we would be at a loss. And the one who constantly reminds us, listen, very carefully. If someone tells us, listen, you are supposed to be preparing for the day you're going. Is this what you are doing? Is it going to benefit you? Is it going to help you in any way? Cut it out. If it's not, cut it out. You know, when I travel, every airline has different rules and regulations. So some of them tell you 23 kilos. Some tell you 23 kilos by two. Some say not more than 30 kilos. Some say a bag should not have more than 32 kilos. Try to break that rule. See what happens. Try to come up with 26, 27 kilos. Try. You know what will happen? They will fine you. They will charge you or you will have to remove things. And this is why a lot of us who travel a lot, we've only got necessities in our bags. That's it. Brother, you came all the way from Africa. You've just got a bag in your hand. Yes. Why? I don't need anything else. I'm not going to carry my whole life with me. I'm traveling. The Hadith says, lead your life as though you are a traveler. Lead your life as though you are a traveler. You want to gather everything and you forgetting the main focus. Today, people tell you, my main aim in life is to be able to own the three big buildings in the center of Tobago. I hope Tobago has big buildings, inshallah. <laughs> my aim in life is to own those three buildings. So he starts working at the age of 10, 15. Perhaps he is so focused and dedicated. Listen to this example so focused and dedicated that at the age of 50 he owns those three buildings wow what was required to do that focus and dedication two things he knew what he wanted he was focused on it and he was dedicated 
he made sure he got it. And then at the age of 60, the uncle on his deathbed, may Allah protect us all. And then he says, wow, I really am excited. I've accomplished everything in my life. I wanted those three buildings and I got them. Now I'm dying. Goodbye. Would that be a foolish person? Yes, very foolish. Why? Nobody's going to shove those three buildings into your grave and tell the angels, hey, I had the three buildings. No way, not at all. No one can write you a certificate and stick it on your chest to say, hey, angel of death or the angels who are going to come and ask questions. This man, he was dedicated and focused. Those three buildings, he owned them. So now give him easy passage into heaven. Doesn't happen that way. Not at all. But when we are focused and dedicated to earn the building of the Akhirah, to earn that which is in paradise, we will achieve it and it will come into our grave with us. And later on, we will see it and we will live in it and we will be smiling. So Allah says at the end of the verses that I read, and I invite you to open that surah, Surah Al Furqan, towards the end and to read the verses known as the verses that explain who is the worshipper of the most merciful and allah says May Allah grant it to us. Allah says, those are the people who will be recompensed with something known as Al Ghurfa, a special place in paradise. A special abode in paradise is awaiting those who were dedicated and focused upon that particular place. That's what makes you a good Muslim. Subhanallah. And Allah says they will dwell therein forever. They will have whatever they want there. So you lead your life in a beautiful way and you die in a beautiful way. And you are hoping for the most merciful to grant you from his mercy, a beautiful abode. Allahu Akbar. Allah is most merciful. Remember one thing, my brothers and sisters, none of us should lose hope in the mercy of Allah. A good Muslim always knows that Allah is most merciful. A good Muslim always knows that no matter what I've done, I can turn my life right now. I seek forgiveness to Allah. I repent to him directly. Do not need to confess my sins to anyone but my own maker. I seek forgiveness from none but my own maker and Allah will forgive you. Yes, if you have wronged a fellow human, you need to ask them for forgiveness. Don't be mistaken. If you have wronged a fellow human, you need to ask them for forgiveness. You need to sort the matter out in your life. It's not that you owe someone $70,000 and then you go at night crying to Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me, forgive me. The next day they meet you and they ask you, where's my 70,000? You tell them I engaged in Tawbah last night, it's over. That's not how it works. This is Hukukul Ibad. This is the rights of human beings. They are far more dangerous and detrimental because people are not Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. People might not find it so easy to forgive you, but Allah will always forgive you. So do not wrong fellow human beings. Make sure that you fulfill their rights. And this is why my brothers and sisters, one of the best of the Muslims are those who call others towards Islam. And you know, there are two main ways of calling people towards Islam. One is by inviting them verbally. And the other is just through our character and conduct. If you take a look at the Jawa and the region of Far East Asia and how Islam spread there to the degree that today we have the most number of Muslims on the globe concentrated in that region, you will find that it's there through the business people and the others who came their character conduct and uprightness automatically invited people towards this beautiful faith of Islam. If one person were to accept the deen through an effort of yours by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically you would achieve a lot because every salah they read, you have a reward. 
But the difficulty is some people believe you should not be kind to non-Muslims. You should not be good to non-Muslims. You should look at them with a dirty eye. Astaghfirullah. That is not Islam. In fact, Islam is the opposite where you need to treat every non-Muslim as a potential Muslim. Every non-Muslim is in fact a not yet Muslim. They would be keen on Islam if we had to lead our lives properly. But we lie, we cheat, we swear, we deceive. We are unfaithful. What else? We have so much in terms of negativity. We fight each other. We are disunited. What else? We oppress our women sometimes in the name of Islam. And we say this is religion. And then what, do, what else do we do? We don't want to greet one another as Muslims. What, what are we showing? What are we showing to the non-Muslims? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he grant us strength. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we educated ourselves regarding Islam. Feel the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is all merciful. Allah loves you. He wants to forgive you. He is looking for any excuse to forgive you. He wants to give you paradise. He is looking for any excuse to give you that paradise. Give him that excuse. Turn to Allah. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really. You know, we always say to ourselves that Allah sends us reminders. We know that reminders come to us. But do you know that there is a limit to the amount of reminders that will come to you before we will become expired or the wrath overtakes us. May Allah protect us. So the question is, who do you want to remind you to turn to your maker? Who do you want to remind you that you need to be a good Muslim? Whoever it is, you can hear them reminding you. Nowadays, it's just a few buttons away. Say the person's name. Whoever, whichever sheikh, whichever person appeals to you, say their name, Google them. And listen, they will give you the same reminder, exactly the same reminder. Amazing. And then we're just going to listen and say, powerful speaker, powerful speaker. But did your life change? No, it didn't. So that wasn't powerful enough. It wasn't good enough, really. What's the point of us attending conferences and conventions and lectures and listening to so many lectures on YouTube and perhaps on the telly and perhaps on the radio and so, so many different places. But our hearts have not moved. Our lives have not changed. I cry when I think of how much Quran we read. We call it a khatma, which means we complete the entire Quran from cover to cover. Not once, but so many times. And our lives have not moved. Sometimes we have not even cried the warm tears. And yet there were enemies of Islam in the past. One verse was enough to shake up their whole lives and they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? It's the sincerity. It's the search and the thirst and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, life is not all about entertainment and enjoying yourself beyond limits. No, it is limited. You should know how to enjoy yourself. You should know what it is that will help you in this world lead a peaceful life and in the life after death, help you inshallah earn paradise. May Allah unite us in paradise. I mean, but it's amazing how we read the Quran again and again. We haven't even changed. And everyone says, oh, that Sheikh, this Sheikh reads very well. Beautiful recitation in my car. I enjoy this recitation and that recitation. My brother and sister, Islam is not just about enjoying a recitation. Do something about it. Come on, man. Allahu Akbar. Change your life. It's not just about saying, yeah, we want you to talk about this and that because our men are doing this and our women are doing that. So talk about this, this, this. It's not just about talking about things. Change your life first to start with. The rest of the world will change. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May he open our doors. Really, I am passionate about what I'm saying. And I've kept it quite simple because in life, we have so many things that people are telling us, bombarding us with so many things. Yet, it's the simple things that would actually change us. May Allah make us better. We cannot resolve disputes within our own families, our in-laws, within our own communities. And we expect to be known as the best of people. 
the ummah that others should be looking at and saying, MashaAllah, we want to be Muslimin. How do we expect that if we ourselves accusing one another of things that we have not done? Allahu Akbar. So many crises people are today. I don't know about this part of the world, but where I come from, I know that it's happening. Businessmen will tell you, I don't want to deal with Muslims. And you say, but why? Oh, they, are, they, they will not pay. You know, they scrounge for the biggest discount. And on top of that, they will complain about the product. Allahu Akbar. If they were to buy the same product from someone who's not a Muslim, they'll pay the full price and they'll never complain. What is this attitude? We are abusing brotherhood in Islam, trying to just find a discount out of the word brotherhood. To say, brother, I'm your Muslim brother. Come on, can't you see? Mashallah, we go to the same masjid. You know, brother, if you are selling this thing at $50, you know, I'm, I, do, I read salah with you, my brother. You can give it to me for 20. And the next day, it's not working. I told you it's not working. But brother, did you follow the instructions and this? So the best thing people tell you, I don't want to deal with them. We should cry if we hear those statements. I've heard a statement saying, if a check bounces, it's a Muslim. A'udhu Billah. I hope that's not the case in this part of the world. But I've heard that happening. People will tell you that, you know what? When you find those who maltreat their women, they're Muslims. Is that true? I hope it's not. We are trying so hard. We are trying so hard, really, with our families so that we can lead a life of happiness and goodness. Remember, I always tell people, you know, you got married, mashallah, and you have a life, mashallah, you have your children now. Concentrate on this family that you have. Don't try and get everything else. It's like a person, for example, he's got a business that is barely making a profit and he wants to open another two or three branches. What's the point? Brother, concentrate on that one business, inshallah. And what will happen? You let it grow and inshallah it will grow. It will become successful and people might be able to take it over and so on. And alhamdulillah, this would be more beneficial for you than if you were without operating properly with one you'd like to just get to another and a third and a fourth, it won't stop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The message is loud and clear. We are not against, we are not against anything that Allah has ordained, but we are saying when you do things, do them properly, do them thoroughly. Do not do them in a way that when the non-Muslims or other Muslims look at us, they will say, look at these people, they are making a mockery of Islam. That is what we are saying. So the laws of Islam are in place. It's the way we do it sometimes that really becomes such that we become a laughing stock. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So let us all resolve here and now to be better people than we are. Let us all promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will become better than we are. I make a promise to Allah. Ya Allah, help me to become better today than I was yesterday and help me to be better tomorrow than I am today. Do you share that promise with me, my brothers and sisters? Do you share it with me? So inshallah, we all promise to become better people. Work very hard. Do not forget it because as I say, you may never be able to attend such a convention again. Who knows? Your life might come to an end right now. In a few minutes, mine might come to an end. Who knows? No one knows. But for as long as we are dedicated towards this betterment by the will of Allah and earning the pleasure of Allah, getting closer to Him as days pass, I guarantee you by the will of Allah, you will never regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He grant us ease and goodness and may He really open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people of this region. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all every form of goodness and us as well. And may Allah protect us from the devil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.